Cassie Campbell Pascal joining us from Calgary. There is a buzz in the city of Calgary tonight. It is lightning. It is the flames. Flames tied for first in the West. Cassie, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm great, boys. How are you? Very good. Very good. Before we get into it, it was about a year ago that you accosted us in Ottawa. Do you yeah, remember this throwing moment? Throwing gloves. <laughs> what did I do? Oh, throwing what gloves did at you us. do? Well, yeah. Tim and I are just trying to have a Sens roundtable discussion, and a bunch of <laughs> uh, Jofas come flying up while after you were on the ice oh. with your crew, and it was just this typical Hockey Night in Canada bullying that goes yeah, on with us. Remarkable yes. arm, too. Like that's a, you, you, you got a, a crew of 30 people to throw gloves on us live on national television. We couldn't continue the interview. I was terrible anyway. It might have been for the best. <laughs> but anyway, it's been a year. Fond memories, Cassie. Yeah, I think that was the University of Ottawa there, too, helping me out. And, uh, or the Carlton Ravens, one or the other. But... Yeah, you know, I was teaching them how it works when, you know, you finally, I finally accepted you guys into the hockey culture, and that's a good <laughs> sign when I start to throw gloves at you. I, I mean, that's a sign of respect right, right okay. there. All right, all right. Yeah, all right. We'll, we'll try and take <laughs> it as a sign of respect. There you go. I'll take it as a sign of respect. Uh, all right, guys, let's start with Tampa. Um, they're in Calgary tonight. It's going to be a fun one. You heard Coach Babcock just a few seconds ago. He's definitely pumping their tires. A lot of people are pumping the tires of this team. Do you think Tampa is the best team in hockey right now? I do. I, I really do. I just think they're the complete package. And just getting, you know, back to Mike Babcock's clip from earlier that you showed, I mean, he's right. They are the best team in the NHL. But I think he is sending a message to his own team and, and to the local media there in Toronto, still some of the things that he feels his team has to work on in order to get to that level. And uh, the thing about the Tampa Bay Lightning is that, you know, they have been through the trenches and they haven't been successful and they've gotten far in the past. And you know, this is one of those years for them where it's kind of Stanley Cup or bust because who knows what happens with all their guys after this season. And, uh, you know, and it's funny. When you used to think of the Tampa Bay Lightning, you always talked about Steven Stamkos, and you still do, but he's not always the top one you talk about anymore. It's Kucherov, it's Vasilevsky, it's Braden Point. I mean, uh, they, they just have a plethora of weapons on their team, and um, their goaltending is unbelievable. And Calgary's going to get a little bit of a break tonight, as my understanding is Deming's going to go in, and not that he's any slouch, but uh, I think if you had to pick one or the other, you'd definitely pick him over Vasilevsky. All right, speaking of goaltenders, uh, David Riddick's been pretty good for this team. I don't know where they are without him. Did you think he'd be able to carry the load when Mike Smith struggled? Do you know what? I think that was the big question mark. I, I thought he was going to be a little bit better than last year. I mean, just getting that experience from last year. And then he really went to work this summer. You know, he worked on a lot of things. He spent time, you know, practicing in the summer. And he he'd take 30 to 40 breakaways after every skate. And, you know, he knew breakaways, you know, weren't really something he was successful at last year. So he focused on that. And he, he just seems to have really studied his game and have quieted down his game. And as emotional as he is, because he's a pretty fiery guy back there, much like Mike Smith, I think he he really worked on his confidence. And he knew that I think he had an opportunity this year. And, and you know, not to say anything disparaging against Mike Smith, but he probably knew coming in that his partner was an older goaltender who was, you know, looking for a new contract after this year. And so if there was ever going to be a bigger opportunity for David Riddick, you know, this was going to be it. And he kind of came in with that attitude. And, and then, you know, they're a good duo. They've really kind of supported each other. I think Mike Smith has helped him, you know, move the puck a little bit better. And, and when things kind of went south there for Mike Smith, as much as he was working hard behind the scenes and, you know, frustrated at the whole situation, he, he was he was really supportive of Riddick. And now he seems to have found his game, although he was, you know, left the last game he played in. And um, who knows if he'll get the start on Saturday or not. But you know, Riddick has really filled in admirably, and, and the guys love him. He, he's such a, a likable guy around the room and a real positive guy. But I still think Mike Smith is going to be an important piece for this team moving forward. Hockey Central coming up at the bottom of the clock in every region except for Ontario. Yeah. If you're watching us on Ontario, pregame for the Leafs and the Panthers coming up, which you'll be able to see tonight on Sportsnet. Uh, Cassie, in general, and I hate just generalizing things, although for some of my intelligence it helps, um, <laughs> The Leafs haven't looked the same since Willie Nylander came back. Does that mean anything, or is it just, it's just the point of the season where the Leafs are going to struggle a little bit, and it has very little to do with working in a guy like Nylander? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with coincidence, but I think any time you add a player of that caliber, people think, oh, he's so good, it's just going to you know, automatically work. Well, everyone's role changes. You know, up front, everyone's minutes change somewhat. And, you know, I kind of look at it 
like adding Eric Carlson in San Jose, it, yeah. it, it kind of was has been difficult. And and he's such a key player. And I think for Mike Babcock and for guys like Pete DeBoer, you know, they're not playing their best. And so you don't want to like limit their ice time, but because you know they're going to be important moving forward. But every one's ice time changes everyone's role is affected and i think it's just an adjustment period and you know sometimes it works where you add one a great player to your team and it just kind of goes off without any problems but i think most times because minutes change for almost everyone and roles change for almost everyone it always takes a little time to ingest when you inject such a great player into your lineup would you think about playing him with matthews or maybe even Tavares and marner oh for sure but you know I think that's one thing that people underestimate about Mike Babcock is he really makes you earn things. And even if you're a star, you really got to earn things. And I think, you know, I I, kind of, you want to talk about James Neal out here and what Bill Peters is doing. You know, he came in, I think as expected was, you know, sort of emotionally drained, if you will, after losing the last two Stanley Cup finals and maybe wasn't at his best. And you want to be careful when you're, when you're talking about your stars and the way you treat your stars, but it has to be about accountability, and I think that's one thing that uh, Mike Babcock and Bill Peters here in Calgary have done well is, you know, really keep their stars accountable. And and you, we all know that there's different rules for different people depending on who you are, no matter what team you play for. But the general rules and the accountability have to be there because I think long term you're going to get more respect from your players. You're going to get more out of your players if everyone in that dressing room knows that they're accountable. Uh, Cassie, finally. Everybody talking about the Jamie Oleksiak, Tom Wilson incident last night. Everyone's had their take. What's yours? You know what? I, I don't. We never had fighting in women's hockey. The, the the maybe one fight I ever saw was Angela James uh, against Donald and Rosa, two of the toughest girls to ever play. But I really thought the way Tom Wilson came in, it was quick, drop your gloves, and he didn't kind of allow Jamie Oleksiak to get set. And um, and so in that regard, I think I like what. Sidney Crosby has kind of come out and said, I mean, you knew this fight was going to happen. And so come out and square off, drop your gloves, look at the guy in the eyes, and then you got to go. And I think that was maybe one mistake that that Tom Wilson did. And having said that, Alexi X got to know who's on the ice and he's got to be aware and expect that that was going to happen. So I think both players are at fault. And I think this is a sign, guys, of how fighting has changed in the NHL. Yeah. When it does happen, guys don't really know the code and don't really know how to do it. So I think this is a case of, of just both guys kind of forgetting about the code and the way it should have been. And Alexiak should have been ready. And Tom Wilson has to understand that you're going to fight someone, look them in the eyes, drop your gloves, let both guys get set, and then off you go. I'm going to be skating at Angela James Arena in Flemington Park over the holidays. There you go. So, oh, yeah, nice, nice. Yes. I won't drop the gloves with anybody there, though. Well, I know you won't be as good as AJ was. No, let me tell you that. She no. was one of the best, no question. Shout out the Arrows. Did she play for the, did she start out with the Arrows? Angela? Yeah, she played for the Mississauga Warriors, yeah. the Sorry. Arrows. Yeah. Let's yeah. Go. Nice. Uh, yeah. Cassie, we appreciate it. Uh, forgive me, I'm not aware completely what your schedule looks like. I hope you have many days off. <laughs> and if you don't, yeah. we'll be watching. Well, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all that kind of stuff to everyone. And um, I will be doing, my last game is on Saturday. It's going to be St. Louis at the Flames, and it's an afternoon game. So looking forward to that. Nice. Thanks, Cassie. All right. Cheers, guys. And uh, we're far enough away from Calgary that we don't get hit with gloves.